Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and this week we are going to do a Q1 2020 quarter in review. Uh, typically after every quarter we kind of run through the standards that were issued during the quarter. Every week we go over the standards that have been proposed but on a quarterly basis we like to run through just so people are aware of what's been issued by our standard setters. Uh, the AICPA uh, started off pretty strong and then obviously with some COVID action, uh, delayed a little bit, um, but they did get out two big standards. The first one was SARS-25, uh, two major changes here. First, the requirement to calculate materiality uh, in a review. Many people have been using materiality in a review for a long time, but it wasn't technically part of the uh, procedures within a review. And so now when you're doing a review of financial statements, there's a guidance on materiality, as well as the ability to give an adverse conclusion. Uh, that was not permitted under the prior standard, so that is a new uh, one. In addition, there are some changes to the report, so definitely something that you want to take a look at. Uh, in addition, SAS 139, uh, which we were expecting, uh, which is the changes to the 800 sections. All this is doing is providing conforming amendments. It's going to change the reports for if you're special purpose frameworks, if you're using cash basis, tax basis, a regulatory basis, they're going to show us what the reports look like uh, in section 800, 805, and 810, which are going to focus on if you're giving a, uh, an opinion on a particular element or financial statement, as well as summary financial statements. So again, predominantly conforming amendments, not a lot of detail in there in terms of changes, but really just making sure that they conform form with the changes to the audit report in 134. FASB started off pretty strong and then obviously with COVID uh, sort of faded out towards the end of the um, of the quarter, but they did kick off with uh, four standards. So the first one is a very niche area looking at the interplay between various topics. Um, as they were working on the financial instrument suite, it became clear that there was a little bit of confusion over what topic uh, was the predominant topic and some of the interaction between them. So this is going to address topic 321, 323, and 815. So um, this is going to be your equity securities, uh, which was the newly created in ASU 2016-01, our equity method in topic 323, and then topic 815 for hedging. ASU 2002 was very um, explicit guidance for leases, in particular a response to the SEC guidance there. 2020-03, also very niche for financial instruments. It is a lot of really minor uh, technical corrections, so not a lot of uh, material changes, but does fix some um, little issues that we found in the COD. The big one, though, of the quarter was definitely ASU 2020-04, which is reference rate reform. As we are aware, LIBOR is going away and we need to have a, a method of transition. And so this is going to be that facilitation on how can we not have to revalue every hedge and every loan and every lease as a result of this, um, especially if you have this backup rate or you don't have a backup rate to replace LIBOR. Um, so this is gonna give those facilitation and some really nice expedience. Uh, this is a sunset though, so it's only out for a limited period of time. It creates a brand new topic, topic 848. Um, and so once that's over, then it'll go away from the, uh, from the codification. So another big standard there. And then last but definitely not least uh, is going to be our GASB issued, which is statement 92. Technically, GASB snuck one in at the end, uh, in the very, very beginning today of the Q2, uh, uh, but we didn't want to count that one uh, because that one was issued technically in Q2. So April 2nd, unfortunately, is going to qualify as Q2. Uh, so the only one they got through in Q1 was GASB 92, which is an omnibus, again, dealing with a variety of information, uh, looking at leases effective date, which I think is going to come back up again soon but also looking at um, some of the information uh, related to AROs and uh, transition information a little bit also in the uh, GASB 84 relationship with other standards so uh, lots of little things to be on the lookout uh, inside of GASB 92. All right, so it was a short but sweet quarter. Um, I think that we're gonna see a major slowdown in standard setting as we are trying to respond to everything going on around us, um, but we did want to at least honor the ones that came out in Q1. Uh, so if you are impacted by any of those, definitely take a read. And thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.